Well, new reports are coming in that Hassan Reddick is trying to stay in Philadelphia, but do the Birds actually have enough money to keep him now? Also, how he made a big swing at linebacker yesterday that seemed to excite everybody except fans who want to spoil the fun. Justin Simmons, he's still available, and his price tag might be dropping. Saquon Barkley spoke to the media yesterday, and you need to hear about his ideas for the Eagles' new look offense. I'm Thomas Mott. This is The Thomas Mott Show. <laughs> Well, Saquon arrived at the Eagles facility yesterday and was immediately greeted by none other than Brandon Graham for heading inside to put pen to paper and officially make himself a Philadelphia Eagle, which is still really crazy to say. Shortly after, however, Barkley headed to the podium and met with the media and confirmed that the Eagles' offensive skill players were a big reason why he wanted to come to Philadelphia. Um, I think, you know, for the point I am in my career, uh, you know, just to be able to get a fresh start, it's good, something new, um, you know, different excitement. Uh, I feel like I'm a rookie all over again. You know, it's a new uh, team meetings, new strength. It's a new locker room, everything. Um, but also just being around, you know, talented guys, especially on the offensive side of the ball. You got Jalen, you got AJ, Devontae, you know, a, a tremendous offensive line. Um, and you know, I, feel like I'm, I feel like I'm a special player. I feel like I still got a lot left and I got a lot to prove. And um, I just can't wait to get in the, you know, on the field with those guys and, and prove it and show it to the world. Um, you put a defense in the bind, um, special RPOs, uh, pick your poison. Um, you know, you will collapse down and take me away. And you got Jalen. And if you want to stick with Jalen, then, you know, you got me running against a uh, behind the gray offensive lines. Also, for everybody worried, including myself, about the whole James Franklin saying that Howie called Saquon, making it illegal tampering, Saquon spoke to that briefly yesterday and said that James Franklin got it wrong. Howie only spoke to Barkley's agent. It's still a he said, she said, but I trust Barkley because I don't want my draft picks taken away. Well, for what it's worth, the NFL officially will look into both the Barkley signing and the Falcons signing Kirk Cousins just in case. Although, no word yet if the NFL will look into the Bears signing DeAndre Swift like .0234 seconds into free agency this past Monday. I guess in the end, Giants fans just keep crying about Saquon Barkley leaving, including Giants owner John Mara, who reportedly broke down in tears when he found out Saquon was signing with the Eagles. Man, if only the Giants owner had the ability to keep Saquon Barkley in New York. If only he could have done something to keep him in a Giants unit uniform. Ah, I just guess his hands were tied. There's just nothing that he could do. Of course, the bigger news from yesterday was Howie Roseman finally addressing the linebacker spot in a really big way by signing 26-year-old former Pro Bowl and Super Bowl champ linebacker Devin White to a one-year heavily incentivized $7.5 million deal. And of course, resident Eagle complainer Thomas R. Peterson and a lot of the people on Twitter immediately pointed out that White was the worst rated linebacker against the run in the NFL last season and had a PFF grade under 50. And while that, of course, might be true. People seem to forget that White is still extremely good and was really productive last season. And do we really believe that PFF grades are the end-all, be-all gospel of the National Football League? When was the last time PFF ranked Lane Johnson as the number one right tackle in the entire league? Oh, and guys like Peterson and other people on Twitter seem to forget that just two seasons ago, White was voted as the 64th best player in the entire league by his peers on the NFL Top 100 rankings. He's also been extremely healthy during his career and comes with a degree of leadership and swagger that Philadelphia literally has not had at the linebacker spot in a really, really long time. I'm all for the signing. I was wanting the signing last season. I wanted it during the trade deadline, and I wanted it during free agency. I just didn't think it was going to happen. And for all of you guys who are still going to comment, he's old. He's washed. I'm not going to pay him more than $7.5 million maximum. Again, heavily incentive-ridden deal. Plus, who would you rather have at linebacker? You missed out on Patrick Queen. Too expensive. So do you want just a rookie? And then I guess N'Kobe Dean and maybe Nicholas Morrow? I would much rather have somebody like Devin White, who's very experienced, can be a leader, also draft a linebacker, pair him with N'Kobe Dean, and have depth at a position we haven't had depth at in a very, very long time. Oh, and don't forget that Malcolm Jenkins was one of the worst graded safeties in the league right before signing with Philadelphia in 2014, and he turned out to be a three-time Pro Bowler, a Super Bowl champion in six seasons with Philadelphia. If you guys love the signing, give me a thumbs up, because I think most of you do. There's just some trolls who want to complain about literally everything. Now, despite reports yesterday that Justin Simmons is asking too much, I think the Eagles might still be in play for the safety following the Rams deal yesterday with the commander's safety Cameron Curl, who signed a two-year deal worth only a maximum of $13 million. Simmons, of course, is way older than Curl, and despite being more experienced, he should not be worth much more than what the former commander player got yesterday. And I'll say it again, the longer Simmons remains unsigned, the better chance the birds have just based on the Fangio connection alone. Oh, and speaking of good chances, the chances of Hassan Reddick apparently staying in Philadelphia seem to be trending upward with the 30-year-old pass rusher still on the roster and without a contract extension. And as we played yesterday, CBS's Eagle reporter Jeff Curry thinks that Reddick will ultimately stay in Philadelphia. I think one of them's going to be gone. Uh, 
I don't think Hassan Reddick really wants to leave Philadelphia, and I think they'll work something out. Hassan Reddick does deserve to get paid more than $15 million a year. Something tells me it's going to be Josh Sweat. Uh, and look, I have no idea what the Eagles can get for him, but when you see the Giants, the Giants of all teams, by the way, fleece the Panthers, who are actually run worse than the Giants, yet only have to pay up a second and a fifth for a player like Brian Burns, the market's not good for Josh Sweat or Hassan Reddick. I, you know, maybe the Eagles do keep both, but I have a feeling it's going to be Josh Sweat. The free agent market this year has not been good for safeties and for pass rushers. We've seen a lot of pass rushers and safeties get signed, but to very, very team-friendly or cheaper deals. Cameron Curl right there is a young, blossoming safety, two years, $13 million. I mean, you saw what C.J. Gunnar Johnson got, three years, less than $11 million per year. It's not been good for safeties, and the same thing goes for pass rushers. Bryce Huff is 25, had almost the same amount of sacks as Hassan Reddick, and got $17.5, $18 million a year. It feels like Reddick is going to have to come off of his $25 million asking price bring it down to the 20s or maybe the upper teens because no team wants to trade for him right now and the longer he stays unsigned or untraded for the better chance he becomes an eagle now the other news that i've tried to ignore all week but it continues to gain momentum so here we got to talk about it is the eagles search for a backup quarterback following marcus mariota going to the washington commanders there are reports now suggesting the birds offered joe flacco a contract and also reached out to tyler huntley's camp however justin's field's name continues to get thrown around and linked to philadelphia including michael lombardi who was dead on about the whole bryce stuff coming to philly last week saying that he thinks the eagles will trade for the quarterback there is seems to be not a lot of momentum. I mean, we saw that video that moved the market, Femi, of him jumping up and down. Everybody said, well, that must be Atlanta's involved. But I talked to a lot of people that were at the Combine, and I can't find a team. If I were Philly, I would trade for him. Because I think if you put him behind Hurts and run the six-back offense with him, he might go in there and play good. Now listen, I get it. Fields is in a similar mold to Jalen, and he could be had for really, really cheap, and maybe he could be a good backup in case the worst were to happen and you need to Nick Foles your way to another Super Bowl. But I'm just not interested. Like, this is Philadelphia. If we learn nothing, can you imagine the WIP and Inquirer articles the second Jalen Hurts had one bad game going forward in 2024? Like, one bad game, two picks, and it's going to be Justin Fields should be in charge of this offense. Guys, come on. Drama is not something Philadelphia needs right now. They have a loaded roster. You gave Jalen a massive bag past this past offseason. End of story. I don't want Justin Fields. I like Tanner McKee. I like drafting somebody a little bit later on. I like Tyler Huntley. Nobody to create drama, and Justin Fields being who he is, a first-round draft pick, creates a lot more drama than we need. Plus the fact that there are no teams right now who need a quarterback that want Justin Fields. Like the Steelers could have had Justin Fields. They chose Russell Wilson. The Giants, they chose Drew Locke instead of getting Justin Fields. They're very clear there's something going on with Justin Fields, whether it's off the field, whether it's on the field, whether they think he's just not a good quarterback. But other teams that actually need a starter have no interest in the former number two overall draft pick. They'd rather draft Drake May or J.G. McCarthy in this upcoming draft. And that tells me a lot about what I need to know about Justin Fields. I must say, we've had a crazy week here breaking down all the stories that have happened in Philadelphia. If more happen, we'll break them all down. We've been the first to do it every single time. Something crazy has happened, and we've just hit 45,000 subscribers as well. I cannot thank you guys enough. It's crazy to be at this number. I can't wait to get to 50. If you haven't subbed yet, haven't turned the notification bell, do that down below right now. We had 4,000 people watching our live last night, breaking down Devin White, and we'll have even more when the next move happens. It's been a crazy week, and it's going to get even crazier. I'm Thomas Mott. This has been The Thomas Mott Show. I love